Hello and welcome back to another episode of Deck Doctor. This week we are going to revisit the old blue jump, but it has changed since the Triton Trainer nerf. And I've been playing this deck a lot, I feel it's a lot fairer since that nerf. And I've also taken this deck to rank 8 in god rank. I'm currently floating around rank 20, rank 10, kind of going up and down, but you know, it's keeping me within that range, so it's been very consistent so far. This is Kumpel Kefir's list from the Monthly Cup. He got second place with this in his lineup, and I really enjoy this deck, and I feel it's really good. You know, he's made some great deck build decisions to make up for the lack of Triton Trainer. Now, if you're new to Blue Jump, uh, the goal of this deck is to collect Feria from your opponent's wells using your superior mobility on your creatures with a jump mechanic, and using tricks like Aurora and Prophet of the Tides and Frogify to take control of the board. Once you've collected enough Feria from your opponent's well, you can then summon the powerful Wave Crash Colossus, a 7-7 creature that gets reduced in cost every time you collect from your opponent's well, and you can go to a minimum cost of four, so four Feria for a 7-7 is incredibly powerful. But that wraps up the basis of the deck. Let's take a look at the cards. These are your main early game creatures. Triton Warrior is fantastic. A 4 4 with jump for 4 Feria is very good. Combined with other tricks like Emperor's Command, Frogify, and even Aurora, you can have a lot of influence on board. Much like the Water Elemental, again, a very efficient jumper, but gives you an additional leg, and this can be handy when you're trying to make up your lake count to get the Frogify. But there's also some great tricks you can do with Water Elemental on turn 1 or 2, and I'll talk about them a little bit later in a land placement. Last but not least, Battletoads is great, sets up two harvesters, very good if you're on the Explorer as well, so you can efficiently start collecting very quickly. Combined with Aurora, it can be very powerful as well. And not only that, Battletoads is one of the best comeback cards in the game. When you are behind, you've got Free Fairy, you can plus one into Battletoads and set up two potential double collectors, which could give you enough Fairy to make a comeback. When you develop some lakes next to your opponent's wells, you can start summoning these creatures. Mystic Beast, when summoned next to an enemy lake, gets empowered by plus two attack and gains jump. So it's very good uh, for controlling the board, collecting Feria, but also makes a very bulky 4-5 creature for free Feria. Now Wave Crash Colossus, as I've talked about, is a win condition. It gets its cost reduced every time you collect off your opponent's well. Very strong stat line in a 7-7 and can be a very big problem for some decks to deal with once you get this set up. So one of your priorities is going to be collecting from your opponent's wells. Last but not least, we have Beiru, which is a great card in very specific matchups. Beiru does great against green and red. It can struggle against blue and yellow, so I wouldn't recommend prioritizing this card against those two colors just because it can remove it very easily, whereas green and red can have a nightmare dealing with Beiru. Another deck that can struggle against it as well is Green Yellow Sack because they're not running Nightmare at the moment, they're running the Shaitan Assassins instead, and we do have free Emperor's Command, so another way to lock out lands from your opponent, especially for those decks like Crackthorn and Soul Eater decks that need multiple lands to gain their creatures down. The deck packs a lot of tricks to help you dominate during the early and the mid game. Prophet of Tides allows you to move your creature and your lake into an advantageous position, potentially setting up a Mystic Beast land, but also being able to catch your enemies off guard and take care of them with stuff like Triton Warrior and Water Elemental. Frogify is great for dealing the first big threat that comes down or keeping it for high value targets like Soul Eater. So Frogify is just tremendously good, especially if your creature survives the exchange with the little frog that has uh, been transformed. Aurora, and again, another card that's very powerful and has a lot of influence. Your creatures have jump, so you're going to be able to jump into great positions, challenge your opponent's creatures, and Aurora can extend their power and allow them to trade up the curve and maybe even stay alive and cause some more chaos later on. The deck also packs some great utility. Spell Will is an insane card because it can not only does it give you two card advantage over your opponent, uh, you can gain cards to help you in bad matchups or just gain additional copies of cards in your deck, which is always a great thing. So Spell Will can have tremendous influence over a match, depending on what you find. 
Forbidden Library is just a card that can just accelerate your win much quicker. Once you've established board control, setting up a library out of range of your opponent is going to give you two additional Theory per turn and an extra card draw. And this is going to be able to allow you to snowball out of control and win the game from there. This, this card will usually win you games if your opponent can't answer it. Last but not least, the deck does pack some removal. We have Ninja Toad. He's not as good as he used to be with the old Triton Trainer, but still a very good creature. It can double collect for you with its jump and haste. It can help you clear a creature. It can be a combined with Aurora and the Emperor's Command next to it. So there's a lot of ways you can use this as removal. Emperor's Command, time and time again, this card shows up in my deck. Doctor's such a fantastic neutral card with a lot of flexibility and utility. Minus two, minus one. Great for keeping your creatures alive in exchanges with your enemies. Healing, another great way to sustain life if you're trying to race your opponent. And number three, you have the structure damage, which is a great way of dealing with stuff like Forbidden Library if they're out of reach. But to be fair, Blue Jump is very good at getting in range of things it wants to destroy. For your Mulligan, you just want to find an early collector and all these three creatures are great at doing that. Water Elemental has some great land tricks with neutrals. Uh, whereas Triton Warrior is a bit more bulkier and be able to survive some combat. And Battletoads give you two collectors, which is always really handy. And once you have one or two of these creatures, then you can look at getting some tricks in your hand. Profit of the Tides, very good for not mo only moving creatures that you want to attack your enemy, but also moving Profit on its own land into a good position to set up Mystic Beast Lakes. And of course, Aurora as well, combined with any of those creatures, becomes very powerful. Battletoads is obviously the best in a 2-2 to a 6-6. With jump is going to be a big problem for your opponent. How much does this deck cost? And it's actually one of the cheaper tier 1 decks. It doesn't have a lot of legendaries or epics. It has 8 common, 17 rares, 3 epics and 2 legendaries with a total cost of 1260 Memoria. Now Aurora is pretty much needed in this deck whereas Beiru is a bit more optional. But I have some budget changes for you guys which are very easy to pull off. So you can swap out the free Emperor's Command for either Falcon Dive or Campfire or a mixture of the two. And that is a good replacement for Emperor's Command. It's been used in previous jump decks and that can give you some time to get some memoria to build those Emperor's Commands. And you know, I, time and time again, I put these Emperor's Commands in my decks. They are worth crafting, so just keep that in mind. Last but not least, if you can't afford Beiru or don't have him, uh, don't worry, you can just put in Water Elemental. Uh, extra Water Elemental is really good, just because of all the tricks you can do with the lakes, especially in the early game. And Beiru is only good in very specific matchups. It's not a card you want to see in a blue jump mirror. And it's definitely not a card you don't want to see against yellow events. It's, it's very niche in those matchups, whereas green and red, it can be very powerful. However, Water Elemental still a very good card and making it more consistent will allow you to find it in your mulligan or your opening turns much easier. Let's take a look at the strengths and weaknesses. Blue Jump has a very strong early game with its movement tricks, the Aurora, and being able to summon jump creatures that can collect very easily and zip around the board. It also has access to powerful blue cards. Some of the best blue cards are actually Frogify, Ninja Toad, Spell Will, to name a few. Forbidden Library, there's another one. Like So many good cards in blue. So Jump has access to them all. They all kind of fit into the deck quite easily, which makes it a very powerful deck. Last but not least, we have a great finisher in the Wave Crash Colossus. A 4 Fairy 7 7 is incredibly valuable and incredibly strong as well. You're going to be able to drop this down for cheap, maybe even get some extra creatures out to boot. If you're behind, if you're just top decking at a certain point, you always have a 4 cost Colossus. You can gain 3 Fairy from your turn and then plus 1, and then you have a Colossus, a 7 7, to help you get back into the match. The problem with the blue jump, you can't lose board. If you lose board control, you'll probably lose the game. It's very hard for blue to get back initiative, especially since Triton Trainer's nerf, now that you can't use Ninja Toad and Ninja Toad survive in exchanges. Ninja Toad is actually one of the best cards to get back on board because it has haste, but you need to be able to set up a card safely to start collecting for you again, and then you can start fighting back. It's vulnerable to damage removal, so Cypher's Wrath, Flame Burst, these are all very good cards against Blue Jump, 
Firestorm absolutely murders Blue Jump in the right situation. So Red do have some very good tools against Blue Jump, which is why we're probably seeing Red Combat come back into the metagame to help counter this deck. Colossus a dead weight if you can't collect from your opponent's well. So if your opponent's very good about sh at shutting you out from their own wells, when you draw these Colossuses at 8 Feria, they are just dead cards. You do not want to play a Colossus for 8 Feria, especially when you can get it down to 4. So Colossuses can be quite clunky at times, but if as long as you collect from your opponent's well, they're going to be very powerful. Land placement is pretty straightforward. If you're not on the explore, you just want to build two lakes and set up your first creatures. And then you try and take control of the board with your combat tricks or just collect Feria until you gain those tricks in your hand. If you have explore, all you have to do is build a lake, explore into lake, and that sets up a good lake spot for you in the future. If you have water elemental, you can do some really cool stuff. Uh, with water element so you can do the same thing on turn one with water elemental if you have to explore you do lake you do explore next to your lake you play your water elemental and then you build a lake next to your well and your po and your water elemental will collect from that well on the following turn if you haven't got the explore and you're playing a turn two water elemental there's a trick you can do a double neutral so what you do is you place a lake in front of your orb pass the turn on your following turn you build one neutral you play War Elemental, you play the lake just like you did with the Explore, and then you set up a neutral above it. And what this does is it gives you access to an, your opponent's well on the following turn, a very powerful opening with Water Elemental. And that's why I consider him one of the best cards to find in your mulligan. And then eventually you want to be able to push an aggressive lake to either have Mystic Beasts jump from your opponent's well to push damage, or just be able to hit your opponent's orb with a wave crash colossus after you've played it and that's about it really control your opponent's wells collect from your opponent's wells play cheap colossus play your mystic beast down and just win the game that wraps up this episode of deck doctor i hope you enjoyed our revisit to blue jump after its changes with the Triton Trainer nerf. If you do like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and a subscribe if you want to keep updated with all the content that's produced on this channel. And if you haven't already, check out feria.com slash the hyphen hub for all the latest decks, articles, and guides. Until next time, guys, take care and have a great day.